can you explain a bit or give us a couple of examples um, where at JP Morgan you guys deploy maybe first LLMs and then stretch it to broader kind of AI concepts? Uh, yeah, thank you. So where we are deploying large language models right now, I think is probably very common to like a lot of the other uh, you know competitors and clients in our industry. Which is you know first of all we use our um, you know large language model, train it on let's say JP Morgan proprietary data sets. You know so let's say if to our case specifically, we'll be trained on JP Morgan research reports so that we make it kind of finance specific, domain specific, and then when we kind of benchmark these domain specific models that could be a little bit smaller than let's say GPT-4 uh, on tasks that are specific to finance. Like for example, we feed them news headlines and then we ask the models to identify sentiment. We find that smaller models trained on proprietary data sets perform about the same to even slightly better than the more general purpose large language models. You know, so with these kind of models, what we can do is then we can produce you know, uh, signals, right? Like more generally, um, sentiment analysis or summaries, which can be turned into signals. And then we experiment on whether they produce uh, trading alpha, you know? And so, yeah, we've seen some success, you know? So I think that's probably one example where, you know, it's pretty easy to imagine, okay, where large language models can help and how you can make your own customized bespoke language models that help you retain your edge and therefore generate alpha, you know, so that's one area where we're investing a lot in. And then another area is, as you said, more broadly, well, you know, if large language models can, you know, be fed words and then, you know, spit out predictions of words, can we also feed it numbers? And then it can spit out prediction of future numbers, like, you know, market returns or volatility. So that's something a little bit more experimental. But, you know, we've done that uh, as well. And I think that's something a little bit less examined by our clients uh, and our competitors. But, you know, we've been doing the research on this as well, and we found some pretty interesting success on, on specific uh, use cases. So in other words, sort of a, a signal-oriented, sentiment-based indicators on one hand, and then experimentation with some time series and sort of predictive um, analytics on that. And can you share a little bit more about the practicalities? So for instance, you mentioned you train on your own research data to make specific, uh, uh, to the degree you can share the, f is it, do you use open source model? Um, do you build in-house? Can you give us a, some detail? Yeah, so actually our model, uh, you know, obviously we started this research before ChatGPT, you know, so we, we're not using ChatGPT, we use something called MPNet, which is open source model developed by Microsoft, you know, so it's a smaller model, as I said, a little bit older, but given the high quality input data, it performs uh, it seems to perform just as well as, you know, GPT. So we're pretty happy with it. But of course, you know, there's nothing that stops us from using GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 as well. There's other kind of practical considerations like legal compliance, computational power. Uh, but, you know, obviously these things will get sorted out in time. So, you know, we are open to you know, migrating to some of these uh, large language models and ex expectations, of course, with more powerful model and proprietary data, then they should be able to perform even better. So you took that model and then you essentially, technically you fine-tuned it or uh, yeah, exactly. to, with, with your own data. Yeah. And uh, to what extent what you're working on is actually in production versus sort of R&D and experimentation? Uh, so we are very close to packaging our uh, sentiment analysis into data sets, data feed for our clients. So I would say that that part, you know, MPNet fine-tuned with JP Morgan data, the uh, signals are, you know, in production or slash close to being in production. The utilization of large language models within our organization is still at a POC stage because, you know, we still have to work out, you know, some of these legal compliance issues. Yeah, I think the theme uh, uh, also, Chris, you brought up in terms of that, that early, relatively early stages for the sector and compliance considerations. And briefly, the biggest challenge so far, like, let's put sort of compliance and those things aside, but more operationally, anything that, um, that you're encountering? Operationally, I mean, computational power is the biggest uh, issue because it's not like before where we can just run our own model on our local machine and then expect an answer in five minutes and then we can iterate a thousand times until we find the optimal solution. Right now, we have to go on cloud, use GPU, work with our technology team, 
uh, to run these back tests. So you know you have to be number one very thoughtful about how much compute you're taking up. Number two, when you design the algorithms, design the models, you also need to be aware. Okay, I cannot. Uh, I have to optimize these things as well. So it, it does require, you know, a different kind of expertise to train these large range models, to design these large, large, you know, AI models compared to the more classical statistical models.